guys, welcome back to Aaron in the Audience. Uh, today we are going to be talking about Star Wars Episode 9, Rise of Skywalker. Um, before we begin, this is going to be a non-spoiler review, so um, there won't be any massive plot points. I'll just be discussing the story as a whole and the characters and their journeys. Baby Yoda is here with me, celebrating. She didn't go in. Firstly, yeah, the end is here, episode nine, um, the third part of the new Disney Star Wars trilogy, and the end of the Skywalker saga. I'm just going to start off by saying and being quite honest, I don't think this uh, episode nine is going to make everyone happy. Um, I don't think it was ever going to be able to make everyone happy, as with most franchises. I think taking Game of Thrones, for example, everyone has their own sort of preconceived ideas about how they want it to end and they get very passionate and involved, which is absolutely amazing for any franchise and it's absolutely what you want. Um, but on the other side of that, it just means not everyone is going to get the outcome that they want. Um, I personally loved it. Um, I was also a fan of Last Jedi. Don't hate me, but let me know your thoughts in the comments what you thought about Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker. Um, but yeah, I loved it. I went to the Triple Bill last night, so I watched The Force Awakens, The Last Jedi, and then right into The Rise of Skywalker. And I think seeing these films one after the other, cons uh, one after the other, really allowed me to connect with them in a way that I don't think I've connected with in the past. Um, there was sort of really no downtime and you sort of got to appreciate the story in a slightly different way because not it's not often you watch three films nine hours straight. Um, so yeah, I really got to connect with these stories again, um, which is lovely. Um, so yeah, let's just get right in. So right off the bat, cinematically, the film is beautiful. Um, we visit a lot of new worlds. We see new animals, new creatures, new droids. Um, that we've not seen before and so they sort of really added more depth to this world which is already unbelievably sort of wide there's a lot a lot going on but on that it didn't really feel like they added these for the sake of adding them every character we met every new world we went to had a plot point yeah it wasn't just there for the sake of it being there um, as you're probably well aware um star wars as an entire saga has really been about um, light versus dark side, Jedi versus Sith, and this film is no different. Um, we're getting to the conclusion point, so there's a lot of emotion, there was a lot of heightened tensions, um, that a lot of the different elements, the music, the cinematics. I think for the whole two and a half hours that the film is, there is sort of not much time to breathe and I really think that is down to two main reasons it's a conclusion there's a lot of things to sort of write off but also because The Last Jedi went in a slightly different path than I think was originally intended or maybe didn't know at the time of The Force Awakens there was a lot of trying to fix no not fix try to adapt to those storylines and really make sure they're included in the decisions that make sense in this film so as soon as the film begins you're immediately introduced to what is happening in this film and what the characters need to do to get to where they need to be. Um, but on that, there's still a lot of intimate moments. There's a lot of personable moments with these characters that really allow them to shine. Um, I think for the new casts, um, so like Ray, Poe and Finn, we get to see them connect in ways that we've not seen in our previous two films. And that is just because they spend more time on screen together and continue to see Kylo Ren struggle with who he is, the First Order, Order, and what they want and how they're going to get it. So yeah, the film starts not too long after The Last Jedi and we're immediately thrown into what's going to happen. So um, this might be a mild spoiler. It's sort of revealed in the trailers and sort of the TV spots that have been released. But we find out that Palpatine has returned. Um, from so the the opening shot is really about Kylo trying to search for Palpatine's voice, 
really at this point in the film we don't know if he is returned it's just a voice similar to how Yoda and Obi-Wan appear to the Jedi. We also see Rey continue to train and sort of continue her journey on the path to becoming a Jedi. We see her struggle with who she is. There's a lot more questions asked about who her parents are and where she's from. I won't spoil it for you, but I think for me, I'm in two, yeah, for me, I'm in two minds about what we find out. One, I absolutely love it because I didn't see coming, but also two, I'm also like, oh, is that it? And I don't mean that in a bad way. I think it's just because in the previous two films, there's been nothing hinted to that or in any of the films about who her parents could have been. And I think that is just an issue with trying to tell a story with original characters from the original trilogy and then this set of new characters. Um, but I loved it. Um, I think it made perfect sense about her journey as a character and her becoming a Jedi. Um, I hope you do too. Um, so obviously, um, Carrie Fisher, I say obviously, I hope you know that Carrie Fisher passed away sadly in 2016. Um, so all the scenes in The Rise of the Skywalker were used or rehashed from unused footage from the previous two films. Um, for me, it was lovely to see Carrie Fisher on screen once again. Um, I think she was, I think, the heart and soul of the Star Wars saga and I think she brought so much life and personality um, to the world and I was incredibly upset when she passed away like quite a lot of fans. All I will say is Disney and Lucasfilms made the best of a bad situation. Um, they really tried to make sure they could include Carrie Fisher in a way that was sort of personable, honoured who she was um, but being able to continue that narrative um, so there was a couple of points where you could see the the scenes in previous films that they had used these unused shots from. They used body doubles, etc. for scenes that she might have not been in. If she was here and she was still with us, the whole story, I think, would have played out a whole lot differently. And Disney, J.J. Abrams, um, have just had to make do with what they've got. Um, what I will say is Carrie Fisher gets a lovely end. Um, it's a very fitting end for her character, for her as an actress, for us as fans and the other characters. I feel her journey came to an end in quite a nice way and it's one of those films that you sort of just sit back. And I think it's the first point in this film that really hit that this was the last one. I think seeing the finality of a character, the last one of the last characters from the original trilogy, sort of meet the end of their story um, is hard, um, but... It made sense in the way that they did it and the plot and they used it well. It wasn't just in there for the sake of being in there. They managed to incorporate it into the plot, which was nice. Overall, my thoughts, I really enjoyed it. I look forward to going to see it again, probably two or three more times because that's who I am. Don't hate me. Yeah, I, I think I was a bit tired when it started being in the cinema for six hours before actually starting the, this film, but... I was engaged, there was no point in the films that I felt disinterested or like, what the hell's going on. Um, the performances of all the cast, I think, were great. That was both old, new casts, droids, aliens. Millennium Falcon played his role beautifully, or her role, I should say. Yeah, um, on the last thing, um, you probably heard a lot online about it catering to fan service, um, which I think is true. Um, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. I think because Star Wars holds such a place in a lot of people's hearts that really, if you don't cater to those fans in some way, and I'm included in that, I think Game of Thrones is proof that you can sort of disengage a lot of people very quickly. And I think Disney have made the right choice by ending it on a note in which the fans could connect and get behind and a lot of the plot points I think were there and a lot of things were in there for fan service um, shout out to the lesbian kiss we'll see if you can spot that at some point in the film um, but I've seen the pages on Facebook and people have been mad and I would just say enjoy it um, it's the last one it's not going to change 
sit back, enjoy the ride, connect with the characters, and see this journey which started in the 70s come to an end. Yeah, <laughs> that's all I can say. I uh, hope you guys enjoy it. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments or on my Facebook page. And so yeah, yeah let me know what you think. Please subscribe, like my Facebook, and yeah, I'll see you soon.